had seen some unusual reactions with concentrated acids and was keen to investigate them further. One of those investigations was unwittingly to change the world of explosives forever. Professor Jackie Akavan has volunteered to show us exactly what Schoenbein did. Jackie, what are we actually doing here? OK, we, we mix in nitric acid and sulfuric acid together and then we're going to add some cotton wool to it to hopefully nitrate the cotton wool. Schoenbein didn't know it, but the cotton will be acting as a source of carbon, like the charcoal in gunpowder. And by nitrating it, he added oxygen and nitrogen from the acid actually into the molecules of the cotton, rather than just being in neighbouring grains. We must make sure that the temperature remains cool. So I'm going to put a thermometer in so we can measure the temperature. Okay. Do you want to help? I do. What, what temperature should I watch out okay. for? It mustn't go above 18 degrees centigrade. Okay. So I'm going to adjust the swatch. Did you just give it's, me an update? It's at 21 at the moment. Right. I don't want to scare anyone. No, it's OK. OK, we we'll just... What we do, we we'll just cool it down a bit. OK. So what temperature are we now? It's down to 19. OK. Well, we need to get a bit cooler. We're down to 18.4. OK. So what's the danger if the temperature starts rising? We just want to keep control of this reaction. I'm very conscious of this. That's like, OK. No, it's... I know battery acid's quite horrifically dangerous, and if that's just as dangerous... It's, it's, it's much... These are very, very concentrated acids, so we've got to be extremely careful. The nitration reaction changes the cotton chemically, so that now, just like in the gunpowder mix, there are carbon, nitrogen and oxygen atoms, an explosive reaction waiting to happen. But in this substance, they are actually all in the same molecule, so much closer together than in gunpowder. Schoenbein had accidentally created a much more efficient explosive. So this is it, our nitrocellulose, or gun cotton, as That's it's right. known. I mean, now it's been... We've washed the acid off and dried it. It feels exactly like cotton wool, just, just like we started with. The only difference with this one compared to the cotton wool is that we've got the oxygen actually linked to the fuel. So, cos we've changed every single molecule of, of the cotton to gun cotton, then it's going to go exactly the same every time? Yes. Go on, then. Right. Are you ready? I'm more than a little intrigued. OK. Stand back. I am already. Ready? Ooh! That gives off a lot of heat. Heat, light, lots of gas being given out. And then you can just have a look, and there's sort of black bits there. That's a the carbon, so it hasn't fully oxidised. Right, so there's not enough oxygen for all the carbon that's in the molecule, so we're just left with some carbon. That's right. And that's just a very, very rapid burn, that woof. Like with the gunpowder, when you just set it fire, it's, it's unconfined, so you don't get an explosion, you just get this rapid burning. It all goes up into the atmosphere, and it's all disappeared as gases, and, you know, that's what, that's what you're looking for. I like it. Can we do some more? You can indeed. Just like gunpowder, gun cotton simply burns when there's room for the gases it produces to expand into. But it burns faster, and the faster the gases are produced, the greater the explosive potential. Schoenbein recognised it and immediately started sending out samples to colleagues and writing about his discovery. The quarrymen drilled several holes in the rock and into one they packed a full charge of gunpowder and into another just a quarter of the amount of gun cotton. So innocent did the gun cotton look that one man said he would sit on the hole in return for a drink at the local pub. Luckily, he was persuaded to watch the test before committing himself to the bargain. First, 30 grams of gunpowder. Let's see if it's more successful than in the mine. Well, the rock split, but not at the hole where the explosives were. It looks like that explosion there maybe sent some kind of shock through the rock and it's peeled off here where possibly there was some sort of fault line. Now we'll try just five grams of gun cotton, looking like it couldn't possibly do much damage. That's a completely different story. In slow motion, you can clearly see all the gases the explosion creates. Brown nitric oxide, 
steam and others splitting the rock apart. It's just astonishing. A couple of hundred kilos of rock has practically disappeared. There's, uh, there's some fragments over there, bits down here, and uh, look at that. Where it was actually placed, there's, there's nothing at all. Like, like that. Look, look down here. That's the hole where it's packed in. So, so this was the other way up. You can see where the clay was. You can see all the way down here, and it's just split it. Now, this is gun cotton, and what's happened here is when the gun cotton has been compacted, confined in there, it's detonated, which is a completely different process to when we saw it being lit. It burnt rapidly. This detonation sends out a sharp shockwave, and as it goes into the rock, the rock gets split. It's a much more powerful explosion, and I can imagine the Cornish miners feeling a little bit like me now, almost overwhelmed at the difference between gunpowder and gun cotton. The quarry men were amazed at the new gun cotton and mercilessly teased the colleague who had offered to sit on it. They were immediately interested and Schoenbein quickly found an English partner to start managing.